Now, breaking news from RTV6. Breaking news. A city in mourning after a life centered on service to city and love of family ends in tragedy. At 1.52 this morning, a 911 call sent Officer Rod Bradway to a domestic disturbance. He entered an apartment to save a life of a woman who was being assaulted. It would be his final call. He's not coming home. Tonight, we're asking what happened in those fateful moments as an IMPD officer is gunned down. And we're joining a community as it mourns the life of a hero. And tonight, the community grieves for a Metro police officer killed in the line of duty. Right now, there is a growing memorial for Officer Rod Bradway. Members of the community are leaving flowers and mementos on the fallen officer's squad car at Northwest District Headquarters just hours after he was gunned down. We've been tracking this breaking news since the very early hours of this morning. Tonight, both the officer and suspect are dead, killed in exchange of gunfire in a Northwest Side apartment. We have team coverage on the investigation into exactly what happened, the suspect and his criminal background, about the officer described as a hero and a community paying tribute. And we start with Jack Reinhardt live at the Eagle Point Apartments near 46th Street and I-465, where Officer Bradway answered his disturbance call at 1.52 this morning. Jack. We can report tonight that Officer uh, Rod Bradway was shot and killed from ambush, and even the woman whose life he ultimately saved tried to warn him that the suspect lurked behind the door, gun up, waiting for him to come inside. Hours after the shooting, a small group came to the Eagle Point Apartments to offer up a prayer, a show of public support for a public servant who made the ultimate sacrifice. We usually go to all the fallen officers and their memorials and do a short prayer. At 1.53 this morning, a neighbor called 911 to report a disturbance in the apartment at 6720 Eagle Point Drive. Eight minutes later, Officer Bradway arrives and notifies dispatch that he can hear the victim screaming and that he planned to make forced entry. One minute later, a second officer notifies dispatch that Bradway has been shot. As you heard, he entered an apartment to save a life of a woman who was being assaulted. And, and, and in turn gave his life. Blessed are the peacemakers in our community who wear the blue. And thank God for people like Rod. Metro police say that Bradway, shot in the heart, was able to return fire, wounding his assailant in the upper chest. The second officer shot and killed the suspect, 24-year-old Stephen Birdo. Officers rescued the female victim and her 11-month-old child. The police officer, not the individual, but the officer represents law and civility in society. And when, when that's attacked and when one of, one of these officers falls doing this job, it's an attack on our republic and our way of, um, our way of government and life. And it's, 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 it's sad for the community. Sources familiar with this investigation say that as many as 15 to 20 rounds were exchanged in that apartment right behind me. Birdo, a convicted felon and just released from prison, was in possession of at least two firearms. And as this investigation moves forward, we can report tonight that Rod Bradway fulfilled his oath as a police officer, that he gave up his own life to save someone else's. Live on the Northwest Side, Jack Reinhardt, RTV6. Jack, thank you. And we are learning new information by the hour about that officer who was killed. Officer Rod Bradway was a husband, father of two teenagers. Those who knew him were already well aware of his contributions and impact on the community. As this billboard at the state fairgrounds points out in big, bold letters, he's also called a hero. RTV6 reporter Chance Walser spent the day talking with those who knew him well. And Chance joins us live now from Northwest District Headquarters, where a memorial is growing at the Fallen Officers Patrol Car. Chance, what's the latest? Periodically today, people have been coming to the scene at the Northwest District to reverently reflect on the life of this fallen officer, laying pictures and flowers next to Officer Bradway's patrol car. He had only been a member of the department for five years, but as we learn, he has spent the better part of two decades dedicated to public service. Before Rod Bradway responded to that early morning call, in fact, even before he was a police officer, he worked as a firefighter in Wayne Township. Rod started with us in 94, and uh, he was a volunteer firefighter uh, and then volunteer part-time employee with us and uh, up until the point that uh, he took his job in law enforcement. It was here at Station 81 where Bradway met and married his wife, Jamie, who was then an EMT. The two went on to have two children, Jonathan and Sierra, now teenagers. Outside their house today, longtime friend Scott McCoffna remembers Bradway as a friendly 
outgoing family man. I just remember the times around the firehouse. We had a really good crew. We all got along really well. We were all just young and getting involved with public safety and really excited about it. In the mid-2000s, Bradway switched careers, joining the police force. But those who know him say his passion remained the same, to help people and to serve his community. Every time that a police officer or firefighter is killed in the line of duty, I always have a little tug at my heartstrings, but it's um, a little bit worse when it's somebody you know personally and have known for a long time. In this business of public safety, one of the, the, the benefits that we have when tragedies like this happen is we can rely on our brother. And that doesn't matter whether it's a firefighter, a police officer, or an EMT, or a paramedic. Uh, we know that that family will come together to support the family and, and pick them up and get them through this. We are back live at North District Headquarters looking at some of the notes, some personal, some not uh, directed toward Officer Bradway. This one, simply, thank you. You are a hero from the Williams family. The Wayne uh, Township fire officials say they've been getting calls from fire departments all across the country offering their condolences today. Live at Northwest District Headquarters, Chance Walser, RTV6. A public servant till the very end. Chance, thank you. Now to the suspect in the shooting. He's identified as this man, 24-year-old Stephen Birdo. He died at the scene after being shot by police. RTV6 has uncovered his criminal background, including that he was just released from prison this summer. RTV6's Derek Thomas has been working that all day and is live with those details for us. Derek? Todd Birdo had only been out of prison for four months. He had a criminal history of drug cases, but nothing violent. 24-year-old Stephen Berto did not live at the address where the shooting occurred. We know that he was employed and he was attending Martin University, but he had apparently not learned his lesson. He was convicted in 2010 for dealing and possessing cocaine. He was sentenced to two years for that crime. On September 29th of 2011, he was accepted into a community transition program. And in November of that year, he was released to Marion County probation. His rehabilitation was derailed when he violated his probation, and in January of this year, he was ordered back to prison to serve the remainder of his sentence. He was released in June, but what would make this man shoot and kill a police officer? Uh, who knows go, what goes through somebody's mind? I mean, clearly, he made a conscious decision to do that. There's no question that the person coming through that door was a uniformed police officer, so he made a a conscious decision to, to take a life of a police officer. Marion County Sheriff Deputy Jason Baker was shot and killed in the line of duty back in September of 2001. His father, Jerry, is a training officer for IUPUI police. He gets flashbacks every time an officer is killed in the line of duty, and he still has no answers. I've been in this business for 42 years, and um, I've seen too much of this that it doesn't surprise me. It's, it's very disappointing, but it's, it doesn't surprise me. Now, Birdo had no con. Well, tonight we are already witnessing an outpouring of support for those close to Officer Rod Bradway, much of it coming from people who never knew him, but were still stunned by news of his death today. RTV6 reporter Tanya Spencer has that part of our team coverage. Until his funeral, this Officer Bradway's patrol car is where members of the community will come and bring mementos to the fallen officer. Fellow officers say that that kind of outpouring of support from the community keeps them going. This man didn't want to give his name, but hands and voice shaking, he brought vases and water and started to arrange the growing number of flowers being brought by the Metro Police Northwest District Headquarters. Just making sure that... They last a bit longer if they can. So what made you come out here? Uh, just wanting to help a little bit. Some, not a whole lot we can do now. But we can show thanks. Some brought stuffed animals, others cards. One letter thanked Officer Rod Bradway for protecting the rest of us from harm, signed, Just a Fellow Citizen. William Pettigo came from Lawrence to bring money for the fallen officer's family. My prayers are for you uh, in this time of grief. Rely on God. He'll pull you through and know that there's a lot of us in the community that really, truly care. And 
you're in our prayers. District Commander Brian Mahone says that community support is felt deeply by fellow officers. It's not, you know, you lost a police officer, it's we lost a police officer, we lost a guardian. And when the community comes out to support us, all of us, um, uh, that means a, a whole lot. That's what gets these guys back in their cars and going back out in the street because they're going to take a run just like Officer Bradway took last night. They're going to take, there's going to be probably another five or six of those today. Already the police department says they've gotten hundreds of phone calls, tweets, and Facebook messages proving that Officer Bradway was not just their officer, but he was our officer. Reporting at Northwest District Headquarters, Tanya Spencer, RTV6. Indianapolis Mayor Greg Ballard is cutting short his economic trip to Europe because of the officer's death and making plans to return to Indianapolis. He also released this statement. The city of Indianapolis lost a decorated hero, husband, and father today. Officer Rod Bradway gave his life protecting the people of our community by charging ahead to confront the unknown. I ask the citizens of Indianapolis to join me in keeping Officer Bradway's family, friends, and brothers and sisters in IMPD in their thoughts and prayers.